Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. This is Bernard with Explore As We Go. In the second part of our video today, we will share with you what it's like to stay in an SHM quarantine hotel and what happens when you have been contact traced and could potentially be exposed to a COVID positive person. Lastly, what is a quarantine order? And is there really a stricter quarantine facility? Stay tuned for today's video and we will find out. Before we start, make sure to give us a thumbs up via the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell notifications so you won't miss our next video uploads. For the past year and a half, I was fortunate enough to shelter myself from the pandemic in the beautiful islands of gods in Bali with my partner, Weedy. On July 2nd, our luck ran out, and we made the conscious decision to go home and get our vaccines as well as spend more time with our family. All right, let's dig into it. So you arrive in Singapore and you have filled all your paperwork, you pass customs, you got your PCR test, and you're finally on your transportation into your assigned quarantine hotel. So how does the check-in process work? So upon check-in, I paid the full amount, $2,000. Unlike the quarantine process in other countries, in Singapore, the hotel given to you is pre-assigned. So basically, you don't get a choice to choose your hotel. And if you're really lucky, you can score a really nice hotel like the Ritz Carlton or the St. Regis or Four Seasons, which are like six to five star hotels. And if you're like me, you get a four star hotel, which is still pretty decent because it's still a pretty nice hotel in the downtown area of Singapore. But the rooms are slightly smaller and some, some of the rooms don't have a bathtub or nicer windows and some people also feel like it's more stifling because you can't open the windows to breathe in fresh air. So my check-in process was quite seamless actually. The bus pulled over into the Orchard Hotel. There was only one person working in a hotel. He was wearing full PPE with surgical gown and mask on and everything. He checked us in one by one at a separate outdoor check-in lobby. We were obviously social distanced. My card was charged up front to pay the $2,000. After checking out, I was given my room. I was given a key card that was only a one-time use. And I was also given these COVID test kits. These are self-test kits where the government actually just recently implemented that you have to do a self-test and report your results online through a web portal on the third day, seventh day, and the 11th day on top of your first PCR test and the last PCR test on the last day of your checkout. When you check in, expect to do a lot of COVID tests. And that's not including the tests that you have to take before you board your flight entering Singapore. So in total, if you can count, it's about six COVID tests. And I know for some people it's really uncomfortable, but that is the process and you really have to get through it. So if you watch this video down here, I'll show you how I did it on my own. It's actually quite straightforward. The instructions are really clear and they even give a video instructions on how to do the self COVID test kit. All right, everyone. Today is technically my third day. I received a phone call from the immigration of Singapore. They were spot checking on me, making sure that I was in the room and following protocols. And I think the new protocol is the hotel gave us self swabbing kits so uh, i'm just gonna work on this test usually i have a nurse to help me in a, in a you know covid testing center all right so i'm following instructions right now this test kit is called quick view okay so this is the swab i just tore it open and this is the the, the thing and i'm going to do each nostrils for at least four times. So I'm gonna start right now. Okay, one, two, three, four. Ugh. Okay, so that's my right side. Now, do the, using the same swap, do the left side. So now step number four, immediately place the swap into the test kit. Ensure it's touching the bottom and stir it three to four times. All right, so now leave the swap for one minute. So one minute and counting, the swap is in there. And then let's see what's the next step. Let's do 
open up this test strip. Place the test strip into the tube with the arrows pointing down for a full 10 minutes. So I'm gonna set a timer, 10 minutes. I have to wait for 10 minutes. And if there is no pink thing on the test strip, then I'm negative of COVID. So how much does it cost per person for quarantine and for couple or family? So if you check the Singapore immigration website, they have all the information there. If your quarantine is pretty standard like mine, which is 14 nights, it will cost you $2,000, including three meals a day. If you're two adults sharing the same room, it will cost you $1,300 per person. It will include three meals a day. So that means one room will cost you $2,600 per room for two people. As for families and minors, there's actually a separate table that is on the website. Costs for minors varies based on age. So I'm assuming that you have to write in to file for some sort of fee and then they will actually calculate based on how young your child is and if, if you're traveling as a family. I do know that they have a lot of appeal forms where if you have specific conditions like if you can't be in a room with carpet or you know breathing problems or stuff like that the government actually takes into account and will assign you rooms with no carpets and actually assign you to a larger room if you're a couple or a family. Those are all stuff that the government can take into consideration so it's not set in stone for sure. So how was my 14-day quarantine experience? Let's put it this way. Isolating yourself for 14 nights, not being able to open the window or even hear like surroundings and just talking to someone physically does take a mental toll on my mental health. Let's just put it that way, it's not fun. And the only way to get through it is just to just be stay positive and start a routine, stay active, and just like keep yourself busy. In terms of food, I was quite fortunate because the hotel that I stayed, which was the Orchard Hotel, they had catering via the restaurant. So the food actually tasted not bad. Some scrambled eggs, hash brown, a little croissant, some more, some green and beans, two sausage, chicken, chicken, chicken this because is dinner, a pale. white rice, so one, this and is my very first meal at this hotel. So this White is my very first sauce. quarantine meal yeah, and stuff. So. If you're even luckier, you get assigned to nicer hotels like such as the Grand Hyatt. They actually give you a menu where you can select your meals and they can prepare for you daily, which is super nice. Like you basically get made to order catering, but it just varies based on which hotel you're being assigned to. So you don't really have an option unless you're assigned to a nice hotel. On my fourth night of quarantine, I received a call from the Ministry of Health. They said that they contact trace me and they found out that someone was tested positive in my flight from Jakarta to Singapore. So I could potentially be exposed to COVID and I was issued a quarantine order. A quarantine order basically means you're going into further lockdown and it's not fun. After all of that happened, I panicked obviously because that's the first thing when you hear like someone's tested positive for COVID and you could, you could potentially have a high chance of catching it. And on top of that, that didn't really help the process was the officer on the phone didn't really help me much because he didn't have much information. And because the Ministry of Health is being outsourced to a, a separate company, which is Cisco, that takes care of all of this quarantine logistics, there wasn't a lot of clear information of what's going on. When I received the call, basically I was being told that I need to be moved into a separate government restricted quarantine facility. All he told me was that I will still complete the same amount of duration, which is the remaining 10 days, instead of extending another 14 days. But apart from that, he just said, pack your bags, wait for a phone call, and you'll be picked up to be transferred. 
so I did just that and it wasn't a great idea because I got the phone call at 2pm and I sat through the whole day until 8pm. After that, I made two phone calls to the Ministry of Health and three phone calls to the Cisco company and then they finally told me that I will be transferred the next day. Once you get the phone call, the officer will usually tell you how long your quarantine order is going to be. You will receive an SMS text from the government, which is the Ministry of Health, telling you that you have been assigned to a quarantine facility. You have to stay home and not be out in the public. At that point in time, someone from Cisco will call you. Once your name is in the system and updated in the process, they will send someone to your place of lodging. They will assign you a swap tester and this swap tester would give you a antigen swap test as well as a PCR swap test. The swabber actually came into my hotel room and gave me a swap test, gave me two swap tests and I was tested negative for the antigen and then I received the results from my PCR the next day later. So after the swap test, I received another phone call from Cisco telling me that my driver was assigned I have uh, about two hours to pack up and get ready and once the driver is here he will call me and when he arrived he basically had someone knock on my door I went through the back door of the hotel taken a service elevator and walked through the back door and boom there was a car waiting for me and I had a private car transfer taking me to a separate facility which thankfully is a hotel but Upon arrival, the hotel doesn't feel like a hotel, which is the current location I am in right now. When you arrive at a government quarantine facility, it's very different because SHN dedicated hotel feels like, still feels like a hotel. So you get like the um, hotel staff working and like you get to interact with hotel staff. But over at this government quarantine facility, even though it's a hotel, it's very different because I don't get any interaction with the hotel staff. My only interaction is with security and they pat me down, they search my bag and they were telling me that uh, there is no smoking in the room, there's no drinking in the room. It felt very invasive. The government quarantine facility felt more like a hospitalized like facility with bare amenities. After I arrived here, I was tagged with this and I had to turn on a tracking device on a tracking app on my device and they also gave me a tracking device to tag me on top of this tag down here to make sure that I do not leave this room and the hotel was just completely barricaded everything was covered in plastic and duct tape it just doesn't feel like a hotel because all the amenities are very limited there are no tea mugs or cups in this room and one set of towels for the whole duration of my stay and no sheet change, no housekeeping, no whatsoever so just mentally prepare yourself because a government quarantine facility is usually more for people who are potentially exposed to COVID and these facilities are usually located near to a hospital which um, the National University Hospital is just right behind this hotel and it's just more of like a facility where they can keep track of you in case you have COVID. Basically that's the difference. The food wasn't great here because the food was a complete change of what my experience was back in the Ultra Hotel. The food doesn't taste good, a lot of plastic, it's just in general it's just a very different experience. So if you're assigned to a government quarantine facility, do not expect a 5 star hotel. It's definitely three to four stars and sometimes you could be even assigned to a hospital or even a public facility where it's just a temporal setup just to house you for the 10 to 14 days to quarantine you. If you're in this government quarantine facility, they check up on you every single hour and trust me, like it's quite invasive. I had to report my temperature on the app three times a day, once at 8 a.m. 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. every day and on top of that 
I will always get a phone call from my phone in my room. I need to make sure I will pick up the phone so in order for them to drop off the food to make sure that I'm in the room. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm feeling okay. Can I do anything at the moment? No. No, anything has been sent to the room right now. Okay, thank you. So that's how strict it is that the government actually checks up on you. And on top of that, I also get a lot of spot checks from the government, like randomly calling me at different time of the day. There was once they called me at like 10 p.m. just to check to make sure that I'm in the room with a video call. This brings us to the end of our second video. Stay tuned for our third video where I will share more tips and pointers on how to get through that 14 days quarantine in Singapore. So I just want to briefly talk about how the checkout process is going to be. The checkout process is usually a day before you get swab tests, which is what I did yesterday. And last night, I checked my app. I got negative for my PCR result, which means this morning, uh, the Ministry of Health would update the thing in their system. And once they have everything set in place, they will call the hotel and say that I'm good to go. I can be released. So here we are, I finally made it to the last day of my quarantine, which is day 15. I'm so excited to leave this place and get some fresh air and eat some local food and just really get out of this like small confined space.